What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Becca Doll. How crazy do I look? So, I have part of my makeup on and part of my makeup off for a reason. So, my hair is super blonde and my eyebrows are just like super, super thin and they just don't have much color to them um, at all. So, I always use this and I love it. It's so simple. Artistry Studio. Their brow, um, it's a Pacific Brow uh, Perfector, Beach Brown is the color. Y'all, I love this. Like, it's literally this easy for me. I don't have to, like, shape, outline, draw, any of that kind of stuff. And you just kind of color in what's already, you know, it's, it's like a, got a whisk, almost like a mascara. And you just color in what's already there super simple and they may not be perfectly even I'm not the best at it and if you can't tell I do makeup like so fast but I will even it up throughout the day but yes this is a product that comes from my business personally and I will leave a link in the description box description box below so you guys can get your own they're not even expensive Anyways, y'all, so it's after Christmas. I really haven't been doing much on social media or recording. I did do some, you know, got some videos and some fun vlogging of our Christmas fun and stuff we've been doing um, before, after, during, all that kind of mess. Um, and it was a good time. Very grateful. We always make um, the best out of every situation. That's just the motto in our home. So we've had everything from me breaking a tooth to unfortunately a death in our family um, over the holidays as well as uh, kids getting sick. So with family, we had like a Christmas on the porch. My editor has a video of all that. You guys will get to see it um, because we didn't, you know, COVID's pretty like rampant, I guess. And we, they just felt more comfortable like if we weren't spreading germs over there even though Jalen didn't have COVID or anything like that she just had a really bad headache and then a fever like the following day so what's been good with y'all I hope you guys had a great Christmas I hope um it was good for everybody Jesus's birthday yes what else is new y'all tell me something good in the in the comments below as we all post these pictures and brag and talk about, not brag, but we talk and share with others, um, you know, online pictures, videos, whatever, um, of our holidays, I think it is good to keep in mind that the holidays are a really, really tough time for a lot of people. Um, you know, and I think we should all take a moment to like just think about those people because um, it's been a rough couple of years. We've um, a lot of people have been through tragic circumstances, um, like not just my family, like worldwide. <laughs> it just seems like it, it was a little bit of a conundrum. Conundrum? I guess it was a conundrum. Um, it was a little bit of a conundrum, but for some people, if they have lost a relative recently, or um, maybe it's hard to provide for their kids this Christmas, or what whatever it might be or it may just be like their mental health um the holidays kind of stirs up our routine a little bit you know we're doing different things it's not the same stuff every day it's extremely busy it's expensive there's a lot of eating you know um things close down on christmas it, there's just a lot of change and a lot of people that struggle with the mental health don't do well with change like that so i don't i don't this holiday was like particularly like very good for me. I didn't struggle with my mental health as much. Um, and I just think that the, the time I have put in to healing myself, I'm like starting to see the payoff from it, right? So um, if you don't know me, I'm Becca and welcome to my channel. For all of you who have been here before, thank you for coming back. Cause I love creating and yes, 
my subscribers are the one that um, hopefully is going to make this thing, you know, be able to help tons of people because that's my main goal is to help people um, and share my story and share other people's story who have been through trauma, addiction, prison, um, you name it, any kind of adverse um, circumstances, you know, to get to a level of, of success. And I've yet to start interviewing people, but I literally have a ton of people, not a ton, I've got a few people I really, really want to interview, and I know it's going to be great, and I know you guys are going to love it. So, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so at this time. I will wait. I'm waiting. Oh, waiting. Oh, wait. Does <laughs> that look funny? My mouth up. Anyways, you guys turn the notifications on. Let me do it in this one. Is that better? Turn your notifications on. Like my videos. Chit chat with me in the comments. And you can also check me out on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and all of those fun things. So since we got that part out of the way, let's kick this thing off. Um, I just really want to go back to what I was talking about because that was the purpose of this video in general. Those sometimes they take a life of their own on. But um, for those of you who don't know, I struggle with um, several mental health issues. And um, I was diagnosed, I figured, out, figured it out and I was diagnosed maybe when I was like 24, around that age. And I look back and I wonder had I been battling these things this whole time. Um, but I am constantly a work in progress. I'm constantly working on myself as a person. Um, now, that does not mean that my depression or my anxiety or my ADHD or OCD does not come back and rear its ugly face. It 1000% does. But because I've worked on myself and worked on myself and worked on myself, I can recognize triggers and stay away from them. I have tools like in my toolbox um, that help me manage it better. Um, I am no doctor by any means. Let's just make that disclaimer. I'm just a chick with some Wi-Fi, phone, and a dope editor. Roll. Hi, I roll. Um, that's it. I, I'm not a specialist. I can only speak from my own experience. So, with so many diagnoses, I'm sure they overlap. I don't know that they even need to be listed individually. I feel like I'm saying a bunch of what is it called acronyms acronyms I don't know like the three letters whatever when I say it but supposedly I've been diagnosed with ADHD OCD severe anxiety chronic insomnia and CPTSD and I think that covers it all I don't know maybe some X Y and Z A B C I don't know anyways I'm sure they overlap each other I don't know that there's a one name fits all but in terms of names and stuff, when you start working on your mental health, and that can look like so many different things to so many different people. Some people take the psychiatry route, which is a doctor, at least in Georgia, that can prescribe you medications. Some, um, I don't think you should do anything without the psychologist part. I think everybody needs therapy, everybody. Um, we have so much stress on ourselves at, at this point in time that the world's been evolving and stuff. Like, I read something that, like, back in the old, 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 old days, the amount of stress that we endure is enough that would, like, put somebody back in the day, like, maybe the 50s and 60s, into, like, an insane hospital and stuff. Um, because we have so much knowledge at our fingertips. But the flip side of that is... Yes, you have knowledge at your fingertips. So if you are struggling and you know something's not right, but you don't know the name for it or any of those things, you can literally use whatever device you're watching me on now, and you could seek out YouTube videos, articles, books, books read to you, um, therapists, psychiatrists, with insurance, without insurance. I mean, your options are really endless. Now, once you get into um, exploring your mental health, 
it is a journey and it's not easy. You are not going to go to the doctor one time or go to a therapist one time or watch one video or do one breathing technique or like a week on a routine schedule or things like that and think that your mental health is going to just soar right through and be okay. You know, that's just not how it works. Um, it took me lots, lots of doctors, like not every therapist is a good therapist for you. Not every psychiatrist is the right psychiatrist. My, um, I definitely took the route of medication. Um, and, um, um, there are forms of the cannabis plant that are legal here in Georgia, but not all of them. Um, that's been a natural thing that's really helped me. Um, and then I have some different supplements and teas and I'll share those with you in another video um, that I use on a daily basis um, and those are the kind of thing those are some of the things in my toolbox I also have breathing techniques I have YouTube videos I watch I have ways I start my morning with affirmations and confirming what I have to do that day I know things like if I notice I'm my space is getting disorganized that's gonna trigger me if I know that I noticed that, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of not been wanting to do anything or talk to anybody and stuff like that. I noticed like, okay, let's get on top of this before it gets, you know, out of control. Now, did that happen overnight? No. It, trust me. It was a lot of blood and tears. <laughs> blood. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears is what I was trying to say. Blood, sweat, and tears for me to get to that point. Lots of doctors. Um, the combinations of medicine I take, a lot of doctors like would be leery to prescribe them to anyone. And it was really, really hard for someone to take me seriously that I really felt this anxiety because the far the doctors are, um, you know, they're scared of being sued. And I mean, it's a journey and like one medicine that helps me is not going to help the next person. And we were all made differently. Um, don't think that you were just dealt a shitty hand in life. Like let's keep it 100. Some people are born with diabetes, Down syndrome. There's so many things. That's just you and the way your genetic makeup is. That's the way your brain chemistry is. Now, could there have been trauma or things that changed your brain chemistry? 100%. It doesn't always mean you were born with it, but what is in your control is that you can change these things. Um, you may not be able to ever make them fully go away, but you can create habits, routines, a toolbox, like I like to call it, of things that you're going to use when you notice these things coming on. These things, I still have a messed up tooth y'all, so I can't talk right. You'll notice when these episodes or cycles are coming on. And then when you are able to know like, okay, I have schizophrenia. Okay, this is PTSD. Okay, this is what they call depression. When you have those names and you have those titles, um, then you're able to like do Google searches and, and get books and read and learn different ways of managing it and understanding it. You can find um, social media groups. I'm in several PTSD social media groups. Um, it, that's the, to me, that's like the purpose of the name of the diagnosis as well as some medications work better for one thing versus some medications work better for another, like um, someone with a bipolar di bipolar disorder may not won't need the same medications that I take because a lot of my um, mental health issues really really surround PTSD. So with in, in like severe se severe anxiety, and then when it gets out of control to a point where like I can't function or do anything, that's when the depression will kick in. So I know to myself, like, I have to get up, I have to go outside, I have to start my mornings correctly. Um, I just have to do certain things that keep me in line. And it's okay, y'all, to tell people, like, look, I this isn't a good idea for me. Um, like, 
I really don't want to discuss this with you. I don't want to watch that. I don't want to go out to a bar and drink tonight because if you know something is, is going to have a, tr it's going to trigger one of your mental health things, then don't ever like feel bad telling someone no, you know, like you're your own person and you need to work on yourself. Like so many people go to a job for your, their whole entire life to work for someone else. And then when it comes down to working on themselves, like they don't even want to do it. And it just blows my mind because you are a living organism and you're changing literally your DNA like remakes itself. You can re attach the way the neurons in your brains or the dopamine levels or whatever your serotonin levels and stuff like that you can change those things you can heal from trauma but it takes work and i really want you guys to know like if you are struggling with any of these things you are not alone and the sooner you start researching and reading about it and um seeking therapy and stuff like that the sooner you will realize that you are not alone. You will also get to a point, because I know at first it feels like, why me, nobody else has this. I feel like the whole world's just like circling around me and I'm just like stuck in this like unhappy place and I don't understand why. And I get that, I've been there, I have been there. I 1000% understand why people cannot go on living and you know have to they make that choice to not live anymore i know what that feels like now i have i have never self-harmed or anything like that but i um i when i was at my lowest before i really you know got a handle on my mental health and these names for it and just really did the freaking elbow grease hard work on myself like I felt like I was all alone and nobody else had this and everybody else was normal like no nobody else is normal yes your circumstances and what has happened to you in your life may be extremely different than what's happened to someone else I get that to you they may seem awful but I promise you if you took uh, 20 random people and you all threw your problems into a pile, right? And you looked at everybody else's problems, you might wanna pick your problems back up because sometimes we don't have it as bad as we think. Um, but our mind's a powerful thing. So with my PTSD like and my anxiety, my body is constantly in a fight or flight mode. So like the anxiety you feel before a test, before you get in a car accident, that is all normal, but my body feels like that all the time. Um, my ADHD really looks something like, I, you probably see it in these videos, y'all. My ADHD really looks something like I start one project and then I start another and then like some days I'm like on 10 and I'm just killing it and I'm getting a million things done and then next thing you know, I can't get anything done. My brain has no dopamine levels. And it's like, like what? It's just like back and forth. It can also look like losing things and not being able to find them. Um, sometimes not being able to, you know, starting projects and not being able to finish them. And that's something that I've gotten so much better at. I'm so proud of myself. That's one that I've done a lot better with. Um, my insomnia. If I do not take my sleeping medicine, I probably will not sleep. I went days and days and days on end um, after my experience with ICU delirium um, of being so frightened to go to sleep that I wasn't going to wake up again that I, um, I couldn't sleep at all. I could not fall asleep at all. So therefore, I had tried every natural remedy under the sun you can think of. Um, and nothing was working. I just like absolutely could not sleep. Um, depression for me comes around every now and then. Um, it's usually followed by an episode of anxiety or PTSD or a lot of hard work and just very, very exhausted. Um, that's kind of when my depression can kick, can kick in. 
I'm also an empath. Um, you can tell me a story or I can read a story or know you and know something that has taken place in your life and a, a tragedy or whatever. And I can literally absorb those feelings and feel like how you're feeling and become depressed when it, when it didn't happen to me. So I've learned to guard myself from that. But what, that's just a little like background, but what I really, really, really wanted you guys to, to, to take away from this is one thing that I am starting to do is to lean in to my mental health, ride the roller coasters of it. When I am feeling like an extrovert and I want to share things and be around people, I know that those are going to be good days to get out of the house and work. When I'm feeling very anxious and very introverted, I know those are good days to maybe tailor my work schedule to something that I can do at home with the kids. Um, I know that when my when I start to freak out that things aren't organized around me or things are a mess or something like that or out of control, I have learned to realize that that's my OCD Take a deep breath, walk away from it. You're gonna kill it, you're gonna get it done anyways. You do always. So, I feel like I sound so out of breath. I've been, I've been busy, y'all. I've been busy. But that's like one of the really, really cool things I think that recently I've been experiencing is how to notice, because your, your, your mental health, how your mental health is, because it doesn't matter what you have. Schizophrenias don't always hear voices 24-7. Um, people that suffer with depression aren't depressed 24-7. There's never always, it's not all the time, and it comes and goes in waves. So if you can learn how to tailor your day, if you can learn how to tell your to ta tailor your to-do list, your today, your expectations for yourself, to where you are with your mental health on that day because it can change day to day. I think for some people, especially teenagers, I'm not hating y'all, but I think teenagers go through. Actually, I had a middle school teacher tell me this, that when she was in school to learn to um, be a middle school teacher or whatever, um, they told her that middle schoolers go through every psychological or mental health disorder in one day. Um, and I think that's true. <laughs> might be true, um, because I'm around a lot of teenagers, but it comes and goes and it goes in waves and it's up and it's down and it's, you know what? It's annoying. It's annoying. If you're a diabetic and you have to take insulin, you know what? It's annoying. There's way more severe things out there. Um, MS, epilepsy, uh, cancer. Everybody's dealt some card, right? And it nobody's card is worse than somebody else's. And yeah, they are. No, what I'm trying to say is, if you think you've had it the worst, you have no idea what somebody else may have been through. Um, do not get caught in the comparison trap of social media. Because people can present themselves one way and look one way and you may be sitting there depressed scrolling on social media thinking oh my gosh they have a perfect life and they're always happy and their kids are always dressed nice and the house is always clean but you don't know what their daily struggles are um, you just don't know and you uh, one thing that will irks me all the time is when someone's like oh you have the lu you're lucky or um, you were blessed with this or whatever when it comes to like my lifestyle or the things that we have. No, I worked my butt off. What you see on the outside is the result of hundreds and thousands of hours of work and studying and stuff like that. For me to be able to explain my mental health to you in this way is from hundreds and thousands of hours and tears and days, months, years of my life lost. I feel like I will never get that back. And that's why I started this YouTube channel because if I can take something that was so dark and so ugly for me 
and turn it into something beautiful that might help someone else. Like that's what really stimulates my heart. That's what really, really makes me happy. So it's just a little bit about my journey and some things in my toolbox and how I try to manage these, you know, this stuff daily. And I just really like my new concept of like riding the wave of where my mind's at at that time. Um, and I really just learned it probably in the past like couple weeks, like, oh, you're feeling this way. You, um, instead of being lazy and laying around and not doing anything, because I promise you not doing anything is a way worse because it just piles up and it piles up and you aren't learning any tools and it's just going to get harder and harder where in actuality, all those nights that I had insomnia, I was up Googling things. I was reading. I wanted to understand what was wrong with me. I wanted to be able to fix it. And then once I got to a place where I feel like it's manageable, I wanted to help others. Um, and I didn't want to help my others. Like people pay me like a, or like a counselor or a therapist. I didn't want to help in that way. I just wanted to boldly, authentically be my damn self, whether y'all like it or not, and tell my story because... Be, besides mental health, which is just a part of my life. That's not my whole life. That's just a part of my life. I have lived one hell of a life. It's been crazy. Um, when you move out, when you're super, super young and you start in the workforce at a really, really young age, you, and away from your city, mind you, away. Like, so you leave where you grew up. And you go and you start working at a young age and then you continue to live on your own and travel and things like that. You meet so many people and you have life experiences. Um, and then just being a very rebellious young lady um, came with a lot of crazy stories and stuff like that that I'm sharing with you guys that I hope it just like helps somebody or maybe I make you laugh or... Maybe I boost your confidence because you now know, like, you're not by yourself. You're not alone. Um, because you're not. And there's help out there. I do not work for anybody. Like I said, um, I'm not a doctor. I do not work in the mental health facility. Anything. Anything. But if you are struggling with something and you need to reach out to me, I will try to like, like, I will like get on Google and try to find something and try to help you find some resources to help yourself. Like I have no problem doing that. Um, just out of the goodness of my heart, but I'm really not affiliated with anybody. Um, I don't know. Maybe that would be in my journey one day, but I also want you to know that like you aren't just your mental health, you aren't just your depression, you aren't just your anxiety, you aren't just those things. Like you have, you're a, a mother, a brother, a father, a sister, an uncle, a business owner, a hard worker, um, a, mu a musician, an artist, a photographer, you're something. And you have so many aspects of your life, like for me, right? Um, I still work in the nightlife industry. That's one part of my life. That's not who I am. I work in a tax office and do all kinds of financial consulting and I'm constantly learning about money and trading and, um, you know, people pay me for that intellectual property and, um, for me to do things for them in terms of helping them start their own businesses or um, repairing their credit or educating themselves on how to start a business line of credit, whatever it may be. That's a service that I actually sell. That's a part of me. Um, I have my Amway business, which is a big part of me. It's been a big part of me my whole life. Um, I have a mom, I have two girls, I'm a daughter, I have some best friends. Um, I love to travel. I can be such an introvert, but then again, I can be such an extrovert. I uh, like there's just so many different layers to who we all are, and we're all, 
I need, and we, we breed dogs. We've got English Bulldogs and French Bulldogs. And there's just so many different things that make up who you are. So don't let your mental health define you. Don't let it control you. Learn about it, get some help, and try to ride that wave of it. Once you know what it is, you can kind of like duck and weed like you box in a little bit with your mental health, if that makes sense. And I really poured my really, I really did pour my whole heart and soul out in this video. I'm gonna be extremely late for where I have to go, but I feel like this was heavy on my heart and I had to get it out. I also feel like this was like a horrible angle now that I'm looking at it. There we go. But it is what it is. I had to roll with it while it was like heavy on my mind. Um, and that's what I did. So I love you guys. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Um, reach out to me if there's anything I can do for you. You know, like I can't, I can help you start a business. I can fix your taxes. I can teach you about trading. I can teach you how to build a social media career. But what I can't do for you um, is I'm not a medical doctor, but I will help you understand something you're going through. I will talk to you in the middle of the night if that's what you need. Um, I will help you figure out how to get insurance or how to get help or something. Like, I will help. Like, I don't want any money for it. Like, my mission in life is to plant seeds for trees I will never sit under. So I just want that to marinate with you guys because there's going to be a video that this is going to relate to. Um, planting seeds for trees I'll never send under. So if you want to know the rest of that riddle or what it means or where it came from, I guess you're just going to have to go through my videos because I don't know which one's going to pop out first. This or the next one. We shall see. But in the meantime, I love you all. Have happy holidays. And I'm here for you if you need anything. You're not alone. Mm, you're worth something. Love you. Bye.